60 years ago, Lee Wolf, the pioneering Alaskan angler and pilot, came across a place where brook trout grow bigger than anywhere else in the world, Minipi. Hidden away in the wild interior of Labrador, he discovered a system of lakes and rivers that no sports fisherman had ever visited before. He knew it was special from the moment he saw the colour of the water from the air. It is a place where world records have been broken, a place where I could realise my dream of catching a trophy brook trout, a truly North American icon. Jack Cooper meets this week's party of anglers at Goose Bay's Seaplane Basin. Jack has been running camps on the Manipi system for 40 years now, and some faithful clients have been coming every year for almost as long. From here, the lodge on Anne-Marie Lake is over an hour's flight away. This was how Lee Wolf first explored the area in the 1950s, from the air. He would fly his Piper Cub float plane over the lakes and streams of the interior, landing and fishing where he thought it looked good. He quickly adopted a rule of thumb for where to put down, based on the colour of the water. If it was very dark and tannic, the fish tended to be stunted, and if it was very clear, the water tended to be too acidic to support the aquatic life on which the brook trout feed. Water the colour of strong tea was what he was looking for, rich in insects and big brookies. When he landed on the Manipi system, he believed he had found the best brook trout fishery in the world. This is Ralph. He's from Newfoundland, but he's been guiding on the Manipi lakes for 15 summers now. He's taking me downstream to the river that flows out of Anne-Marie Lake. We start fishing on a stretch that looks like where Wolf filmed his famous sequence of catching three brookies on one cast. Our script was to be somewhat different. Every fisherman remembers the first fish they ever caught. I caught mine in Canada at the age of two, a tiny trout in a tiny stream in Ontario, a brook trout. I didn't catch another one for 40 years, but when I did, in the far north of Quebec, fishing for Arctic char, I realised how important that little brookie had been to me, and how little I actually knew about them. Coming to Minipi in search of a trophy brook trout was a way to rediscover where fishing had begun for me. All right, we're wading down towards yeah, the point. Yeah, going towards here, yeah. Take your wicket here first and I'll we'll work your way down. So, we took three boats to get here. Where are we? This is Harvey's Hole. All right. Start with a stimulator first. Have a few cast across there and let it drift down here. Cast across, let it drift. Yeah. Am I looking to try and get it to skate on the surface? Yeah, you have to try to skate it over the surface. You're exactly right. So stripping quite yeah. fast. Because, of course, the fast-moving water, as you can see. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll try the stimulator, and then we'll try mouse. Okay. Give them a better, some more, better morsel to feed on, I guess. Well, let's get this fly wet. And I want to go all the way over. Yeah, far as you can reach, or you can reach over there. Okay. Keep it short to start with. Yeah. Yeah. And fishing right the way into the bank? No, you're doing fine there, uh, Sebastian. Okay. You've obviously had a few casts. <laughs> <laughs> Very kind of you to say so. I guess since I was about eight was when I first started fly oh. fishing. Should I put it all the way out to start off with? Start or off, start off, off and short. Go all across. Yeah. So Ralph, this mouse pattern, what's it supposed to be imitating? It's supposed to be imitating an Arctic lemming. Mm -hmm. And they will, of course, eat those when they're crossing the, the waters here. The lemming cross the water? Oh, yes. So actually, it's not, it forms part of their natural diet. Uh, well, no, 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 it's also an attractor too, like a, like a bomber, for example. It's uh -huh. more of an attractor. But speaking of bomber, you probably should try a bomber too. Okay. I don't know what I'm going to say now. So you've been caught with one of these before yourself, Ralph? Uh, as a matter of fact, I have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's smarted. 
So Ralph, have you been caught with any other flies? <laughs> yes, and I prefer to be caught with barbless ones. <laughs> <laughs> any particular pattern? <laughs> no, they all feel alike actually. <laughs> Sebastian, yeah. you probably should try a muddler there too. A muddler? Yeah, because their mouth doesn't seem to be doing much. Not yet. What sort of size six, muddler then? Six or eight or something. Brought those for pike. For pike, yeah. Poppers, yeah. Are they good for pike? Though? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, pike will take anything. They yeah. Don't choose it. Yeah. Good. Well, hopefully that muddler goes subsurface. If not, you could probably try a streamer, have a few casts. Do you normally see the activity on the surface in these streamy parts as well? Well, uh, sometimes they come up and take them, eh? Uh -huh. And more times, you know, you use the streamers or the modelers that go subsurface. You can, uh, they'll come up and get those. In an age when a fish caught was a fish killed, Lee Wolf was an early advocate for catch and release. For him, a game fish was too valuable to be caught only once. I have come to agree with him, but at this point, once would have been fine with me. Back on the main lake, something finally takes my fly. It's an Isax Lucius. I think it's foul hooks as well. It's... Years ago, when the Aboriginals were here, see, the pike was the, food, the fish of choice. Right. And the brook trout was fish for dogs. For dogs? Well, that has changed, eh? 